Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers and this presentation is titled The Crash That Should Have Never Happened, XL Airways Germany Flight 888 Tango, November 27, 2008. Now, this was a maintenance acceptance test flight and it was being conducted by people, first of all, who weren't qualified to conduct a maintenance test flight. Uh, and it was being done in normal airspace instead of dedicated flight test airspace. Okay, the acceptance procedure is written uh, by and for Airbus test pilots. And you can have company test pilots do it if they're suitably qualified. Now, that's one of my pet peeves about how some operations do this. At United Airlines, okay, we had Joe Sobchak, who headed the flight test section, X uh, F-15 test pilot, um, side experimental test pilot uh, member and uh, another guy in there, uh, SR-71 test pilot. They got they got a lot of test pilots in there, but they're all qualified. And uh, Tom Tilden was an SR-71 test pilot. And the, the little picture that you see of me uh, next to the T-38 there in black and white that at least you'll see at the end uh, there is a little subscribe thing. That was taken by Tom when we were both squadron mates uh, back in the test ops out at Edwards. But okay. United Airlines has extremely highly, really overqualified uh, people to uh, to do these maintenance test flights because they do other test flights too. They do engine out ferries uh, in the case where, well, when we used to have, you know, 47s, you could do a three engine out ferry. You, you don't do that on a 777, okay. But anyway, I digress. Okay, the point is highly qualified. Well, I ran into a... Uh, guy who I knew at, a, at another airline, he's a management pilot, and he told me he was doing test flights. And I go, oh, that's interesting, because I'd known this guy for a while. I go, are you an SETP member? And he goes, what? And I go, Society Experimental Test Pilots. I figured if you're a test pilot, you're a member of the Society Experimental Test Pilots. Uh, most test pilots are. Uh, it's a rather difficult uh, process to go through to get selected in that. It's very selective. They, as they say, they're very proud. It's very selective, and some people don't bother. That are actually very good test pilots, just don't bother. But, um, you know, most people who are test pilots are a member of it. So uh, he didn't even know what it was. Okay, well, that's interesting. Um and I said, well, you're a test pilot, right? And he goes, well, no, I'm a management pilot. And I go, what are you doing test flights for? Well, we do those, you know, and he all talking about him doing test flights. Okay, well, that is, uh, it never set well with me, still doesn't. And it's really a, um, uh, it's, it, it's asking for trouble because you need to know what you're doing because you have to have the background, the depth, the training. OK, to do these test flights, you got to know what you're doing. You got to know the dangers. You got to know the setups and and you just have to know what you're doing. You can't just go out there and play with the airplane. Uh, it'll get you in trouble. And that's what happened to these guys. Now, uh, this flight was back in uh, November 27, 2008. It was um, I'm not going to pronounce the airfields because uh Parapanian River Sally I okay they took off and they returned there it's uh um air, airports uh, on the Mediterranean that I can't pronounce but be that as it may but there were seven people on board there were two pilots and that's required for the flight two pilots but they had an extra pilot they had three engineers and they had a um, aviation authority individual on there it was an acceptance flight the aircraft um was uh it was owned by german airways and it was being uh being repainted uh to new uh, new zealand livery air new zealand uh livery and it was going back to them because uh they had the been the leasing company and and they wanted their aircraft back and uh, german airways was done with it so this was an acceptance flight to make sure the airplane was in uh, good condition and as a maintenance test flight or an acceptance uh, acceptance flight that is done with minimum crew because you're doing flight test maneuvers that have a degree of danger. Okay, well, why did they crash? They had a problem with the angle of attack indicators. Well, why do you crash with a problem with angle of attack indicators? You got airspeed, you got power, you got thrust, you know, you got pitch, uh, you got an altimeter. What do you need? Well, they crash because they were doing certain. Uh, flight test maneuvers to test the AOA system, and they were not aware that they had a problem. Hey, let me tell you about my sponsor. I've been getting a lot of spam calls lately, and I have to answer my phone because I've got rental properties. But more often than not, it's a solar panel salesman or a, a car warranty company on the other end. 
Even worse, I once got a call from someone pretending to be my grandson. When I asked him his name, he hung up. It's scary to think how easy scammers can access our information to use it to target us. And it's not just phone calls. I've had my credit card information stolen several times with fraudulent purchases showing up in the middle of the night. It's a violation of privacy and it leaves you feeling vulnerable and exposed. That's why I've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura is an all-in-one online security solution that helps protect my personal information and keep me safe from scams and fraud. With Aura, I can see what data brokers are selling my information and request to have it removed. Plus, I get alerted if my information shows up on the dark web or if there's suspicious activity on my accounts. Aura also includes a VPN to keep my online activity private, a password manager to create and store strong passwords, and even parental controls to keep your family safe online. And if the worst happens and my identity is stolen, Aura provides $1 million in insurance to help me recover. In today's digital age, protecting our personal information is more important than ever. Aura makes it easy to take control of your online security and privacy with one comprehensive solution. You can go to Aura.com slash Ron Rogers to start your two-week free trial, also linked below in the description. Don't wait until it's too late. Take action now to keep yourselves and your loved ones safe online. You won't regret it. Thanks for listening. Now, this is a little uh, drawing of the LA indicator there, and they had a little gap there. And what they had done was they had, in preparation for delivering this aircraft, they had cleaned it by power washing uh, the aircraft. And what they had neglected to do was to install a bunch of protective covers on a number of parts of the aircraft to prevent this high-pressure water from ingressing into the components. Well, they didn't put those shields on, and it got inside the angle attack indicators. Now, there are three angle attack indicators. Uh, here's a picture of sensor number one and three. Number two is on the other side. You know, you split them from side to side because, you know, if you got uh, uh, a little bit of beta, a little bit of side load there, um, not going perfectly straight, you'll get disruptions in the angle attack indicator. So you, uh, you know, you have them on both sides, just like you have pitot tubes on the both sides. And the uh, what had happened was two out of these uh, were filled with water. And when the aircraft was doing its... Uh, uh, test flight, as it were, these uh, uh, sensors froze. Uh, the water inside them froze and rendered two out of three of them inoperative. Now, the uh, even, even the center wasn't excited about uh, this whole profile. They called it a um, they called it a disguised flight test. The yellow is the way they filed there, and they went out on these airways and they're going to try to do various maneuvers. Well, like I said. When you do flight test type and maneuvers, you've got a dedicated piece of airspace um, that you do these in. Uh, you know, that, that can be, especially over in Europe, that can be difficult to acquire, but there are places uh, that, that you do it and you need a really a designated place to do it. It's very hard to do it in, in the structure because you've got all the other airplanes up there and they requested turns and stuff like this and uh, the center was not happy about that. They, they'd seen these guys try to pull this before. And uh, they just weren't too happy about it. Uh, the red maneuver, uh, the red line there is where they ended up maneuvering on this flight. And they basically had uh, to cut it short. They were going to go up and do a you know high altitude cold soak APU start. That's kind of a, a standard acceptance sort of thing. And uh, they just uh, were not getting the clearances they wanted because the airspace people... Um, were not happy uh, intermixing them, that intermixing uh, this um, test flight, as it were, uh, with the other aircraft in the area. So that, that hurt what they were doing. So they're climbing up to 320, and of course it's getting colder. And just about the time they get there, uh, the AOA sensors number one and two freeze up. Okay, so they're stuck in a cruise flight condition. Well, that's not too bad. Um, you know, it's not going to give you too many erroneous uh, type of situations in that position, but um, you use the AOA indicator uh, in the protections, and that's part of the alpha protection function of this. You, 
you've got a lot of flight control computers here. You got the, the fax, the sex, the ELAX. You got more acronyms than you know what to do with on this airplane. It really gets to be fun going through training. And as you go from normal to alternate to alternate law without speed stability to direct law to mechanical backup, um, you transition through a lot of states and a lot of things work and a lot of things then don't work. Uh, so it, get, it can get to be really interesting when you transition uh, between various states. So here are some pictures of the primary flight displays, and these displays give you uh, various pieces of information on what control laws you may or may not be in, and you have various uh, speed tape uh, depictions on whether you are in normal or uh, direct law that when you're in direct law, it's uh, uh, direct to the flight control. It's kind of interesting because uh, the airplane has maximum roll rate of 15 degrees. Well, to get that, you have to have an aerodynamic roll rate higher than that. And the normal aerodynamic roll rate is about uh, 20 degrees. So when you go in a degraded flight control mode, okay, you're in direct law, the airplane actually rolls faster faster and it's much more crisp. There is a, uh, I think it's called a towel function, which is the uh, kind of rise time of the uh, aileron input. And you smooth that out because when you don't have the, um, uh, when you're not in normal law and you're getting direct control of the ailerons, It'll jerk you around. It, it's very crisp. It's uh, it almost uh, you know okay. This isn't an F one hundred four, but it had kind of that crispness there, uh, much more crisp uh, input. So when you go to normal law, you kind of smooth that out. Uh, but then you have the various degradations, and they're depicted up there. Uh, use manual pitch trim uh, and uh, manual pitch trim only when that's in red. You know, things in red aren't good. You're in manual law, and you've got a powered rudder, and you've got trim, and that's it, baby. All the computers have given up. Something's wrong. They, they're not happy, and, and you're back in. Uh, you're, you're basically in manual, and uh, you're on your own. So it can get real interesting. Let's look at these depictions here. When you're in normal law, see, you've got that, uh, you, well, you got the top of the red, that's the stall. Um, you, you won't get there because uh, you've got that kind of hashed yellow above it before you get to the, the straight line there. You got that hash law above it, and the top of that is alpha protection. You get to alpha protection or alpha floor. And the airplane says, hey, buddy, you're not going any lower. The power's coming roaring in, and uh, it, it's, uh, it's going to keep you from killing yourself. But if you're in pitch alternate law or direct law, you don't have alpha protection. You don't have alpha floor. You can take the thing right into a stall. And, of course, uh, in flight test, when we wanted to actually physically stall the aircraft, we put it um, out of normal law into uh, alternate or direct, and then we could, uh, we could stall the aircraft. Okay, now here's where the problem starts to develop. You, as you come back down and you slow back down, of course the angle of attack is going to change. A higher, uh, uh, you need a higher angle of attack at a lower airspeed to keep the airplane flying. The nose pitches up, you get a higher angle of attack. But now the airspeed and the angle of attack aren't agreeing on uh, computers one and two, and it's kind of like okay, you got, you got three main flight control computers here. All, all these uh, Sex and Elax, they all work together uh, to form three basic computers powered off the um, uh, air data uh, computer system. Okay, so um, what happens there is um, you got two uh, that are agreeing because they're wrong, but they're frozen. And the other one that is correct is the odd man out. It's like, you know, you got three guys and uh, you want pizza and two people want pepperoni and the other one wants veggie. Well, the people with pepperoni are wrong because that's processed meat and it's going to kill you and stuff. The veggie is the right person, but the two guys with the pepperoni go to heck with you and they throw the, uh, they throw the uh, veggie guy out. Okay, well, that's kind of what happened here. They, uh, the, the two wrong ones won the argument and the guy who was correct, they threw out. So they quickly got into a, a situation here where essentially all three of the units failed because the uh, the two ended up determining they were essentially wrong. And the third one, uh, it, it gets complicated here with the failure trees, but basically um, they're out of normal law. And they're, they're coming down. They're not getting the, uh, the flight test uh, type of parameters they want to do done. Okay, so they're expecting uh, when they come down here, and they're they're 
essentially coming in on the approach. They're not getting, they're not up there at altitude where they should be doing this sort of maneuver where they're trying to engage in the, in the alpha protection here. What, what they ended up doing was they we're coming down the lower altitude structure. They were down to just about 3000 feet when they're doing this test and they're going, okay, we're going to do the alpha floor test. Well, this is kind of what they thought they had. But in reality, they were in a degraded law. They were out of normal law. So this is not what they had. But the airplane was still thinking that, that everything was all fine. And uh, I'll show you what's going on here. So they're slowing up. And uh, the airplane is indicating on the left what, what would be a normal function. But the accident flight... Because the AOA is stuck at a high value, you know, they're slowing up and man, it, it doesn't take 15 degrees of AOA to keep you flying at slow speed. It only takes four. So they're going, man, this airplane is great. Now, there's some interesting stuff and this is why you need the background in this. Because they were, um, uh, they were getting improper indications. Okay, there's a couple things that, uh, that came out here. First of all, they had an error message of uh, they lost... Cat 3 dual. Well, okay, you're not going to do a Cat 3. What do you care? Well, you get the loss of Cat 3 dual when something is wrong. You, you've you had a system failure. Okay, well, what was the system failure? We don't know. Okay, we're, we're going to terminate the flight before we do it, or at least we're not going to do anything uh, funny here. We're not going to uh, push the uh, edges of the envelope here. They also got another indication, which was check gross weight uh, message in the MCDU. The, uh, that's the multifunction uh, cockpit display unit, uh, like your uh, FMC, FMS on the, on the Boeing people. So they got that, check gross weight. Well, you got that because they had entered a gross weight in the, uh, the FMC, flight management computer, but the AOA is saying, well, that doesn't make sense. You got this airspeed, this angle of attack, mm, that doesn't make sense. But that didn't trigger these guys going, hey, something, something is wrong here. Um, so what was happening was the airplane was telling them, man, we are super lightweight, so you got ridiculously low airspeeds. Now, uh, normal people doing a test flight uh, would, would uh, have parameters written down, numbers written down on what they expect to see during these maneuvers. And they would know that, you know, your, your stall speed is not at 79 knots. Um, and instead of being the, uh, the 118 there, uh, I mean, it, it, it's ridiculously low as they're coming in, uh, they're getting slower and they get to the point where they actually get the stall. Now what's going on in this, the, the airplane is still thinking it's in normal law, um, it's it's indicating the stuff on the right, you know. Yeah, it's it's getting down there in the warning range. You're getting uh, you're getting below the 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 velocity lowest selectable there, and you're getting into the caution range, but you're way above, according to the erroneous depictions, you are way above the alpha protection speed. But what happens is the the airplane keeps trimming uh, because it it it's in normal law, so you got the trimming stabilizer and Everything's fine until you get into the, the stall. And now once the aircraft recognizes it's in a stall, it goes, hey, this is not good. We're out of normal law. It's yours, buddy. And uh, that's when you get the rapid flight control mode degradations. But in this process, the elevator had, uh, the stabilizer, excuse me, had moved to a position of full nose up. So the guys get into a stall. Well, what do you do when you get into a stall? You bring the power in. Well, you bring the power in essentially holding the stick full back, although the stick isn't working now because you're in manual law. So they had the aircraft position with essentially full back stick. They come roaring in on the power and the aircraft just pitches up violently. I mean, some of these pitch attitudes uh, were, were very extreme. And of course, it, it goes right up into a stall. They don't have a lot of altitude to cover. The thing goes through a lot of gyrations. It essentially uh, ends up rolling off on a wing. And of course, once it does that, the nose drops uh, drastically. And well, you're out of the stall now, but you've got to 
trim the stabilizer to get out. And of course, um, in training, they they give you the, the manual trim situation, but you're usually in a stabilized condition. You're coming in and you're going to land. You are not out of, you're not in a extremely out of trim position where uh, you've got full power here and now you're trying to regain control because you would have to really move the manual trim uh, controls there up next to the throttles uh, to get the nose down, reduce power, whatever. Uh, you got to get the aircraft out. So um, they just went into extreme gyrations and lost control of the aircraft basically because uh, the systems in the computations were telling them that, oh yeah, you're very light, you can go very slow until you actually got into the aerodynamic stall. And then it basically said, hey, uh, flight computer said, we don't understand. Uh, we've got uh, multiple uh, errors on, on what the airspeed's telling us, what the angle tax telling us, and, and we're just bailing here. It's all yours, buddy. Uh, but you're limited in, uh, or you're in a situation where you have very limited control of the aircraft in a very out of trim situation, and it just doesn't work well. So they ended up crashing into the Mediterranean. There were several um, uh, boats out there that actually witnessed the crash. So this was an accident that really shouldn't have happened. They had a few insidious warning signs that hopefully a uh, maintenance test flight crew that, that's had the training would have picked up. And of course, um, the uh, when you lose, lose the Cat 3 Duel, that's something in your mind that, hey, something's not right here. But when you, when you get the gross weight um, question there that, hey, something's wrong there. That's when you start to go, well, you know, there's an error, there's, there's an error with the angle of attack typically, because that's how it measures it. So uh, you should have, you should have called the whole thing off there. An experienced crew should have done that and hopefully would have done that. And uh, the lesson to learn here is that uh, uh, don't try uh, funny things with uh, degraded systems or problems with the airplane. Use proper maintenance techniques when you're going to power wash this airplane by using the uh, guards and have a qualified crew do the test flight so you don't get yourself into a world of hurt. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it informative.